Welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Today's presentation is presented by my creator and carver, Dan Gallagher. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers, where woodcarvers are helping woodcarvers. I uh, appreciate you all taking time out of your Saturday afternoon to come in and speak with us today. Uh, it's a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 25th of February. Uh, today in our meeting, we have a, a special guest with us uh, that's been with us one other time before. Uh, Dan Gallagher from uh, Goofballs by Dan is going to be joining us here shortly. Uh, Dan was one of our uh, very first presenters way back when we started these meetings. Um, we started almost three years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long, but uh, we started having these live meetings almost three years ago. Uh, Dan came in then and presented uh, for us. And if you want to watch that uh, past video, you can go out on YouTube uh, through the International Association of Woodcarvers page, and you can find Dan's presentation back there. Uh, so we're happy to have him on today. Uh, before I get started uh, with the meeting, though, I want to let you all know today we're doing a live auction in the meeting. Uh, periodically, we do these so that we can raise money to uh, allow us to continue to have these Zoom meetings. Uh, we have to pay for that Zoom subscription every month, and then we have a yearly fee that we pay. And so we take the benefit or the, uh, the proceeds from these auctions and uh, we're able to uh, continue the meetings uh, by paying for those subscriptions. So um, we encourage you all to participate when you can. Uh, we wanna thank Healthy Knives. They are a, they're a uh, sponsor of ours. Uh, Rich and Holly donate a knife to us about every month that we are able to go in and auction off. Uh, and again, those proceeds go to help us continue these meetings. So. Uh, today, we're going to be auctioning off a unique knife. Uh, every now and then, Rich Smithson, who is uh, the knife maker for Helvy Knives, and again, Holly, Holly helps with the handles. She does a lot of the packaging and stuff. There's a lot of things that she does as well. But Rich is the one who shapes the blades out, sharpens those. Um, and he makes a signature series knife for himself uh, that he's actually uh, autographed and sent to me and we're auctioning that off today in the meeting. So uh, here's the knife. Uh, you'll see his signature there. Uh, the blade is an inch and seven eighths. Um, again, you see the Helvy, you see 2023 there. On the other side, it has his name that he's burning there and Sky for Skyler. Uh, it's got the signature series and the number on the bottom. And uh, again, this is gonna be up for auction. Also, Chris Morgan was on one of our meetings a few weeks ago, and uh, he carved a refrigerator magnet, and he has sent that actual carving to me, and so we're going to include that in the auction. So the auction will be both of these. It'll be this refrigerator magnet uh, from Chris Morgan, as well as the signature series autographed Rich Smithson uh, knife that we'll be auctioning. Uh, if you would, put your bids in the chat. Uh, the highest bidder will win the auction and we'll ask that person to stick around at the end of the meeting so that we can gather your information uh, so that we can send that out to you. Uh, we take payment by PayPal. Uh, so if you win, we'll ask for you to pay for it by PayPal. Uh, we don't include uh, shipping charge on that. So we'll pay for the shipping to get that out to you. Uh, but again, it's the healthy knife. It's the uh, refrigerator magnet by Chris Morgan. Uh, both of those are available, so if you want to start putting those in the chat again, I'll call that at the end of the meeting, and uh, the highest bidder will win. So, uh, having said all that, I want to tell you a little bit about what we've got coming up. Uh, next week, we'll have Jared Wood back on with us. That's March the 4th. Uh, Bruce Ankeny, or Ankeny, I'm sorry, I always mess that up. Uh, Bruce Ankeny, who uh, is on the meeting today, is going to be on with us on the 11th. He's going to be doing a demonstration uh, on the 18th of March, Tim Perry is going to be in. Uh, Tim's in uh, Dave Levy's uh, club, and he's going to come on and uh, present for us. On the 25th of March, we got Raymond Kinman. Uh, Raymond is a Disney woodcarver. He's done a lot of the signs and stuff for Disney. Uh, so he'll be on with us on the 25th. And then on April the 8th, Van Kelly's going to come in. And again, uh, Van does some uh, YouTube videos out on YouTube. Uh, he's actually po posting quite a bit, so if you want to go out and check his stuff out, uh, look up Van Kelly on YouTube. You'll be able to find him. He'll be on on the, uh, the 8th of April. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about workshops that are available at the end of the meeting. I want to go ahead and get to the uh, presenter today. Again, we got Dan Gallagher in with us. Uh, he's coming to us from New Jersey. Uh, Dan, we appreciate you coming on today, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. 
Uh, he's going to be talking to us about carbon golf balls and using some of the uh, extra materials that you have to enhance those golf ball carving. So Dan, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, the last time I was on, I talked about my, my process, how I go from opening a golf ball to carving one of my, uh, my goofy faces. Uh, I have a second camera we're going to throw up on the screen. I've got two here that are unpainted yet, but they're finished the carving. Um, and so these two golf balls, uh, they uh, focus more on the expression. Uh, I focus more on just carving the eyes and the mouth. I don't worry about the nose. Uh, they do have the eyebrow involved there and the teeth. And when I go to paint, I just paint the eyes and the teeth. Now I've carved a ton of different golf ball faces over the years. And after you start getting comfortable carving golf ball faces, you want to start now getting a little more creative, get, getting a little more adventurous with your carvings. Um, and so I started to start thinking outside the box a little bit. And what happens if uh, the tongue was showing? And so I did a face where the tongue was showing a little bit. And I got a lot of interest when people saw that. Um, and I had someone actually say to me, well, why don't you have like the tongue sticking out? And I kept thinking, like, how would I pull that off? Because I like to try to stay traditionalist in the sense of I'm using the material of the golf ball and the golf tee. Um, I try not to add any other type of material outside of those two elements to, the, to my carvings. So I started to think and I wondered, well, what if I took the back of the cap off and I took a coping saw and I cut a portion out and I carved a face with a little gap in there in the mouth and I shaped that portion that I carved out of the back, and now I can have a tongue sticking out. And so by utilizing the material, thinking a little creatively, you're able to give that effect of like the tongue sticking out. Well, how else can I pull this off? Well, let's get a little more creative. Let's use the tip of the golf tee, and I can turn that into a cigar. And I can make it look like I have a golf ball that is smoking a cigar. So just by thinking a little outside the box, you can get a little creative with what you're doing. And then as you start working a little more, I did this one for Memorial Day. And so by cutting the golf ball differently, I turned it into a military helmet and I gave it a whole camo paint effect. And so now I've got a soldier that has a helmet on. And I used the golf tee and I did venture out and get a little piece of balsa wood and, and burn a little flag. But I now have a military themed golf ball. Hopefully if you saw the promo, you can really get adventurous. And to all those Looney Tune fans, we've got Marvin the Martian. And so by cutting the golf ball uh, with an X-Acto knife, I was able, I actually had to use two golf balls because this uh, top part of the helmet, I needed a second golf ball to carve that away. But now you can glue those down and get a little creative with your material. I used the top of a golf tee and shaped it a little bit and used some bristles from an old paintbrush. And now I have a Marvin the Martian effect. And then if you're really adventurous, this one is quite dangerous to do, is using an X-Acto knife you can then start cutting it so that you have a rose. And so I have a petal down here. I took the tip of a golf tee and I have a thorn and I'm able to cut open the golf ball so that I can now have it as like a rose. So I have a yellow rose here just by utilizing the material that's there. One of the ones I love to do, and I've started to work on one, is I love to do an alien, a one-eyed alien. But what I do with this one is for the antenna on the alien, I take the tops of the golf tees and I cut them and put them at an angle so that when they're glued down, they look like antenna. And then when I paint everything, it'll all blend in and it will look like an alien. Now I'm gonna backtrack a little bit here because this one, I'm at the point where I'm ready to start carving the mouth but I always get asked, how do I open a golf ball? And so I started working on one here. Uh, I usually use golf balls that have been donated to me, given to me from family and friends. 
Um, my personal favorite is using the top flight, but I've also used Wilson, Nike. There are a couple others out there. Uh, every now and then you do come across an older golf ball that still has the old rubber band core. And when you start to cut into that one, you start hearing the snaps. I immediately throw it in a Ziploc bag because this will get everywhere. But once I get a golf ball, I take, uh, they sell these at like Walmart and other, other sporting goods stores. It allows you to draw a center line on your golf ball. Uh, I know a lot of golfers like to do this to kind of draw on a, um, a crosshair so that they can line up their shots. But I use this to draw a center line to go around the golf ball. And then I use a PVC pipe cutter. And it takes a little extra time. But when you use this tool, you're able to work around that line that you just drew and kind of score that line just by squeezing down a little bit, opening it up, turning, squeezing down. And once I get all the way around, I'm then able to take a flathead screwdriver and pry underneath. And as I start to go around, you're going to hear a pop. And that pop is the glue giving away so that I can then open it up. And it's like Christmas morning or my birthday. I don't know what color is inside. Uh, you would think that companies would stick with the same type of colored material inside, but they don't. Um, I can actually, I've had a couple of people for as Christmas presents buy me, you know, a box of golf balls and I'll cut open all three of them in that box and all three are different colors. But each time you open it up, it's something new. It's usually intriguing, especially with my carvings. I like to leave whatever the inside color is as the skin tone of the faces I carve. And you're going to notice this sheen on the outside of it. It's still the residue of the glue. So what I normally like to do at that point is I'll take one of my carving knives and I'll just go around the outside of the golf ball and I will just carve that off and just remove that material. And the nice thing about golf ball carving is that it's a lot like basswood. It's easy to carve, but the benefit is there's no green. So I can carve these in any direction I need to, to kind of go around and get the shaping and getting that glue removed. Once I have it shaped and the glue's all removed, I then switch over and I then grab that center line tool again. And I start to, I start to draw on some center lines and uh, that gives me the lineup so I can start doing the eyes and lay out where the mouth is gonna be. But here's the one that I've recently worked on and it has the eye already done. It's gonna be a one-eyed alien. So I have the eyeball carved. I also like to, with my style, do the uh, eyelid as well as the eyebrow. I put some wrinkles in the forehead. I usually do like a little light wrinkle underneath the eye. Uh, and that's about it when it comes to the eye part. When it comes to the mouth, I draw on whatever I want. I then do a stop cut around that line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to first remove the material inside that stop cut. And all I'm trying to do is just create an elevation between the mouth area and the teeth and have them be different heights. So I work my way around getting rid of the material inside the mouth. And you'll start to notice as you do this that the material inside sometimes will chip out and kind of uh, snap on you and I usually don't use sandpaper, um, mainly because it does create a very fine powder dust that gets everywhere. But as I start to carve, I try to leave it natural with the knife cuts. Um, now, when I've opened golf balls up 
I've also done it with, and I've heard some people like to do this, um, take a roofing nail and stick that in a Dremel and kind of go around the outside. And what I noticed when doing that is you definitely want like a face shield because that outer cap will start to melt and start flying off everywhere and hitting you in the face as you are uh, trying to cut open the cap. Um, I've heard some people even, uh, they instead of doing the flathead screwdriver, what they do is they uh, wrap it in a paper towel and they pop it in the microwave for a couple of seconds, a damp paper towel, and they allow that dampness to cause the cap to pop off. So once I start having it kind of roughed out inside, what I'll then do is I will uh, use my pencil to kind of draw on where I want the teeth to be. And I'll, when I draw on the teeth, I'm not too concerned about having the balance because these are characters. And so they're gonna be kind of crazy and creative. And so I'm not really worried about making sure everything lines up exactly with these. Hey Dan, just a uh, couple of questions that are in the chat real quick. Yes. What was the size of the PVC cutter that you referenced earlier? It is a one and five eighths inch or 42 millimeter. Okay. And uh, how hard is the uh, material on the inside of the golf ball uh, as compared to basswood? I mean, is it soft, I guess, or hard? It's, or? It's, I, I consider it basically the same. Basically the same, the same. The same type of, uh, the same knives I use when I carve basswood, I use when I carve golf balls. And I get the same, um, the same type of resistance when cutting the chips as I do with basswood. Uh, okay. I also notice that I need to sharpen my knives the same amount of time as if I was carving basswood. I don't need to sharpen them any sooner or I definitely don't wanna go any longer than I would normally when I'm carving basswood. Um, about every uh, 15 minutes or so of solid carving, I'll then run my knife on a strop. So it doesn't dull my tools or ruin my tools in any way compared to basswood. Um, so when I start doing the teeth, I start doing the, that line that I just put in, I do a stop cut along that line. And I just do slight little cuts towards that stop cut just to kind of create like a little bit of a channel where the teeth are gonna be. I'm going to uh, do this again later on with uh, V gouges to kind of really clean it up and give it the effect that I want. But I'm just kind of starting to go around and create a channel between the upper and lower teeth I then use two different types of micro V gouges. Um, one is a three millimeter V gouge and the other one's a 1.5 millimeter. The uh, 1.5 I use to do the space in between the teeth and the three I usually use to uh, do the channel between the upper and lower teeth. And then Just I'll- off screen. Oh, sorry about that. There you go. Uh, I'll use the three to kind of do the channel between the upper and lower teeth. And then I use the, the three also to do the wrinkles on the outside of the mouth. Now, I also like to round the mouth a little bit. So I'll start to go around the outside and just take a little bit of material, those sharp edges off of the mouth. And as I work around it, it kind of starts to take shape. 
and not look so so uh, rough and sharp. When I went to college, I, uh, I always started out as a woodcarver and uh, going off to college, I was like, I, I can't bring all of my carving tools. And so I started to think, you know, what could I, what could I do? Cause I could still continue with the hobby, but not have as many items needed in a dorm room. And another carver in the club I was in at the time, the Delaware Valley woodcarvers, they uh, started experimenting, carving some golf balls. And I started talking with them and said, you know, how difficult is it? And they said, the hardest part is getting the cap off. Once you get the cap off, carving inside is quite easy and, and can be a little addictive. Um, so this was a nice way to still continue with my hobby while I was away at college, but not feel like I need to have a whole lot of tools. You know, other than the PVC pipe cutter, I usually use one detail knife and those two gouges. That's about the bulk of the tools I use to do my carvings. Um, so it really makes it easy and convenient to be able to have this as not only, you know, when I was away at college, but also be portable. I could take, you know, if I'm going to the park for like a picnic or something, I could easily take a small little box with those items and a couple of golf balls and I can be entertained for a couple hours. Now, a couple other ways that I've gotten creative with some of my golf ball designs, uh, in addition to carving the, uh, the eyes, I thought, well, what if I had a pirate? And what if I carved an eye patch? And so just by leaving some of the material of the golf ball intact, I'm able to create the effect of having this eye patch. And then with the painting, I gave him a gold tooth and the skull and crossbones on the eye patch. I then started wondering, well, what about hats? So I started to do backwards hats on the golf balls. And so I kind of made it look like he's wearing a hat on backwards. Uh, I also started doing glasses. So I started doing some sunglasses. Um, I tried to avoid uh, regular glasses that would be clear on the, the glass itself, because then I'd have to try painting eyes or, or coming up with some type of an effect. But at least with this, I can paint the glass for the sunglasses and kind of have those silver shades on. Uh, I also did one, and if anyone out there knows Mike Rowe from Dirty Work, uh, Dirty Jobs, he has a foundation called, uh, oh, now I'm blanking on the name of it, but I'm trying to get this golf ball to him because I carved this for him. Uh, because I love his podcast and his uh, TV shows. And so I wanted to just send this to him as a way of saying uh, thank you for all he does. And it's got the logo on the hat for his uh, nonprofit. So if anyone knows how to get in touch with Mike Rowe, I'd love to find out how to get this to him. I've tried reaching out a couple of times and I haven't heard back. Um, and then one that really breaks the mold Uh I cannot pull off the duck legs with anything other than wood. I can't use golf tees to pull that effect off. But this is another one that's quite dangerous to do uh, with an X-Acto knife because you're trying to do all of those little jagged edges of the golf ball to act as the shell. And then you carve your duckling inside, paint them up, glue them up, and it kind of creates this nice little effect to make it look like the duck's still partially in its shell. So we just got some different ways there that you can think like outside the box and get creative with your projects, but yet still staying kind of true to, you know, the material I use. I don't want to venture outside too much from, you know, the golf ball itself and the golf tees. 
So once I have this carved, what I'll then do is I will use some uh, Gorilla Glue and just put a little dab on each and glue them on to kind of have those antenna on this alien golf ball. And then I usually take, I get these at like Michael's, these little uh, driftwood discs and I glue on a golf tee. I'll wood burn my uh, initials and the date on the bottom of them. And that's what I'll use as like a stand for the golf ball. Another piece of a little bit of Gorilla Glue on the tee and it will then be mounted and it's a nice little trophy. I've had some people who reached out, they uh, run uh, different golf tournaments and they've asked me to uh, sell them some of the golf balls to use as trophies for those golf tournaments. And so having it on a nice little stand, a little mount like that makes it a nice little trophy that they can give away. And I've offered, you know, if they had, you know, farthest shot or um, hole in one or whatever they wanted, I would burn it on the base so that they would have that as that trophy for them. Do we have any other questions in the chat? No, and I'm maybe getting ahead of you a little bit, Dan, but can you talk a little bit about your finishing process as far as painting and uh, if you do any kind of selling or anything on them? So for the painting, I do um, acrylics and I mostly just focus on the teeth and the eyes. Uh, so they'll start off with a, um, a coat of white. Uh, I usually just use just regular white acrylic paint, um, nothing fancy. Uh, and then I'll do the, the color of the iris. Actually, I'm probably getting these wrong. Uh, I'll do the color of the eyeball, then I'll do the black, and then I'll put like a little dash of white on there. Uh, for the teeth, they'll just get painted that white. And then I use, let me actually grab it real fast so I give it the right name. But I use a material that, uh, it's like a high gloss that kind of creates a wet eye effect on the eyeball. I put a little bit of this gloss varnish from uh, Liquitex and I just do a small coat on the eye and it gives it that wet eye effect so that it looks like it's realistic um, because you know our eyes need the, the tear ducts in there, it has to stay moist so that uh, if any particles or any dust get in there, um, it protects the eye. And so to kind of give it that realistic look, I put a little bit of that gloss varnish over top of it and it kind of gives it that wet eye effect. And then that's it. I don't spray it with anything, uh, especially since I'm leaving pretty much the, uh, the skin tone, whatever color uh, the material is inside. Um, it's just getting that eyeball and those teeth painted. And I just leave it like that. I don't spray it with anything. Um, I tried Krylon once when I first started out, uh, but it, it started to uh, bubble a little bit in those painted areas. And I did not like the effect of it, the look of it. So I kind of stopped doing that. And I just leave it with the acrylic paint and that's it. Hey, Dan, have you done any other um, carvings in like softballs? I know sometimes people will take softballs and open them up and carve the inside of those. Uh, is so that I, similar? I have opened up a softball once to give that a try. Um, I did not find it to be similar to golf balls at all. I actually found the material inside to be uh, quite tougher than what I have uh, experienced with golf balls. Um, I have had people ask if I would do, uh, like vegetable carving, like, uh, potatoes. Um, I know there's, uh, on Instagram, there's a, a pumpkin carver who likes to do, uh, potato skulls and then he'll deep fry them, um, just to kind of give it that cool effect of a, uh, a cooked skull. But I've, I've never tried carving it with, uh, with food. Um, I'm wondering if the starch of a potato would have an effect on the sharpness of my, my knife. 
but you can see I'm starting to get those teeth to car be carved in there. I've had some people kind of compare the aliens that I do to, if you're familiar with the Disney movie uh, Monsters Inc., I've had some people say it looks like Mikey with the, the one eye. And um, Mikey, I think, has only one antenna, but I usually put two on here to distinguish him. So Dan, uh, where do you get a hold of tools like V tools like that? I've seen you gouges like that, but what about the V tools? So this is uh, from the company Dockyard Tools. Um, so I found them in catalogs like Treeline, and I've ordered from there to get those. And then my detail knife, I can't go wrong with my Helvi. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's the right size to be able to get into uh, some of the tight little areas I work on in a golf ball. And Dan, I'm sure a question that uh, a lot of people will have on their mind is, uh, do you sell the carvings that you do? If so, where can people find it? And also, do you teach classes or teach people how to carve golf balls, say, through like a step-by-step -step process? So I used to have an Etsy page. Um, I haven't kept up with it lately. Uh, normally, it's just people getting in contact with me, either through Instagram or my Facebook page, which is both uh, goofballs underscore by underscore Dan. Um, I usually just do work like that. Uh, as far as teaching, I've had a couple of groups reach out and have me come out and do teaching like cup packs. Um, and usually when I do that, I do it with soap. So I teach soap carving first because uh, I figure, you know, everything you can learn about wood carving, you can do with soap, but without the risk of getting cut with sharp knives, because I'll use sharpened popsicle sticks. I throw them on a belt sander and kind of sharpen up the popsicle stick to kind of give it that knife effect. And then I'll do soap carving demonstrations and teach classes that way. Um, I haven't had anyone reach out to ask me to teach a, a, a golf ball carving class. I did go once in Pennsylvania uh, in the summers. There is the uh, Cherry Ridge Campgrounds. They have the Northeast Woodcarvers Roundup. I have gone there and I have taught a little bit there on their like uh, they do one night during that week where it's kind of opened up that anyone can set up a table and kind of do a little demonstration, do a little teaching. And so I've done a little bit of golf ball carving there and instructed some carvers on how to do that. Um, but I do also have a step-by-step -step guide put together as a PDF that I can send people um, when they've asked, you know, I want to get into this. How do you do it? And they can find your information through uh, Facebook and Instagram. Is that right? Yes. And that's probably the easiest way to get in contact me, with me is with Facebook or Instagram. So we've got a couple of other questions in the chat, uh, Dan. Do you wash the carving before you paint it? So after you finish carving, do you have to wash it or you really just go straight to it with the acrylics? I, I go straight to it with the acrylics. Um, the only time I've ever washed it is I sometimes, um, depending on the darkness of the material inside, I'll either draw on with a pencil or a pen. And sometimes I've had where I've, it's been a darker material that the pencil line's not showing up. When I go over it with a pen, I might, you know, hit that pen mark uh, a little too soon and kind of smudge some ink. And so I'll kind of wash the ink off. But other than that, I typically go right from carving to painting. I usually wait till I have about four or five carved to then paint um, because just to pull out the paints just for one golf ball when I'm just doing the eyes and the teeth, it, it's really not worth the, the setup of my paints to, to do that. So I usually wait till I have about four or five carved and then I'll move on to the painting stage. And then another question we have, you talked about uh, soap carving. What brand of soap do you recommend uh, if somebody wants to get into doing that with beginners. So I personally love ivory soap. Uh, yes, you're going to have that smell. Um, it's an intense smell, especially after a bunch of people are carving with the ivory soap. But I find the consistency with the bars of soap to be um, on point. You know, I can open up any bar and they pretty much have the same consistency. I haven't had that with uh, Irish Spring or Dial where I've, 
sometimes opened up a bar and I kind of start to carve away and it kind of starts to, to be more of a, a fine dust. Uh, it kind of starts to flake off and not come off in chips as consistently as I've had with ivory, uh, ivory soap. Um, I also, my very first carving, that's how I learned was my dad had me do ivory soap. I had a school project in the fourth grade where we had to carve uh, a native animal of Alaska. And so I chose a polar bear. And so polar bears being white, we did use ivory soap to kind of keep it with that look. Um, the one interesting thing to note about ivory soap is over time being exposed to the air and light, it does change color. And it goes from a, a w nice bright white to kind of like a dull yellow brownish tint. Um, so it definitely shows its age over time. But with soap, what I love about it is, you know, if you make a mistake, water acts like glue. And if you really mess up, just throw it in the shower. You know, with wood carvings, you throw it in the burn pile. With soap carvings, you throw it in the shower. And Dan, you were talking a little earlier about how you were making your tongues and stuff. Where are you, uh, are you opening up a completely other golf ball for that? Or how are you no. doing that? So what I normally do is I will then take the backside off of a golf ball. And so if I pop this one off and I'm just using that flathead screwdriver to go around and pry that glue. And so I get the cap off. And then what I'll do is I would sit this in a vise and take a coping saw and just take off a little portion of the back here and then glue this back on so the seam matches up nicely with the, the cut of the golf, the cover. And then I'll have that material that I can then carve and insert as a tongue. Now, the only time I really have to use another golf ball is like, for instance, when I did Marvin the Martian and I needed to get that type of material for that visor on his helmet. I couldn't get that from a cut on the actual golf ball I was carving. So I had a second golf ball that I carved. I cut open the cap just to get that visor. So while we have a little uh, pause here in the conversation, I just want to remind everybody we are doing an auction uh, today live in the chat. I just wanted to uh, remind you of that. We've got a Rich Smithson Helvey signature series autograph knife from Rich. Uh, also got a Chris Morgan um, ornament uh, that's a magnet. He's put a magnet on the back of it, refrigerator magnet that he actually carved live in our uh, meeting a few weeks back. Uh, both of those things are being auctioned uh, as one auction in the chat. If you're interested in that, again, place your bid in the chat right now. It looks like the high bid's 210. Uh, we'll call that at the end of the meeting, and uh, the highest bidder will win, and we'll get that information from the person who wins. Again, those proceeds go to uh, support these Zoom meetings. So uh, if you're interested in that, go ahead and uh, place your bid in the chat. Uh, any other questions right now for Dan? If you have questions, feel free to unmute uh, and ask directly of him. Um, we'll uh, keep the meeting going here for a little bit longer. Dan, I noticed on your, uh, your, I think it was your Instagram page, you do other carvings besides just golf balls. Uh, so you've gotten into doing maybe some cottonwood bark and found wood. Uh, do yep. you do caricature carving too, like basswood and stuff? Or what other kind I of do. carvings do you do? Um, so I started when I, my dad did wood carvings as a hobby. And so when I expressed an interest in learning how he had me learn on soap, um, but once I graduated up from soap and could start doing wood carving, uh, I started working with basswood um, and started doing animal life. And so I've done a uh, wolf's head. I've done an Eastern box turtle, a uh, mouse on a block of cheese. I then started doing a little bit of character carving. I did like the half moon Santa Claus. I, I made a couple of um, uh, bottle stops from, and I'm blanking on the carver's name. 
first name's Pete. Can't think of the last name. Um, but I've done a couple of his bottle stops. I took a class with Peter Ortel on uh, doing a full size character, and I did one of my Scoutmaster at the time. Um, so when it comes to wood carving, you know, I'm still learning what I enjoy most carving. I've gotten into bark carving. Uh, my most recent completed carving was uh, in the face of a Native American on cottonwood bark. Um, I'm part of the North Jersey Wood Carvers Club, and uh, I was able to enter that this past year in our in our carving show, and actually came home with a first place ribbon for that carving. Um, so I do do wood carvings, but uh, I tend to like the golf ball carvings more just because it is a smaller project. I can get them finished uh, in a faster amount of time. Um, I find that when it comes to the larger wood carvings, I lose interest in the piece after a little bit of time. And I usually have to kind of set it aside and come back to it later on. Um, so having something small that I can kind of go from start to finish in a couple hours and then, you know, once I have several of them done, I can paint up and feel accomplished like that, uh, that I enjoy more. So I started to put on some wrinkles on the outside using that three millimeter V gouge. Um, at this point, I would do just a little bit of touching up uh, of some of the areas, some of my knife cuts, and then I would start gluing on those golf tees. So I'm gonna grab my Gorilla Glue. And I just put a little drop on the golf tee itself. And then just kind of set it in place on the golf ball. And Dan, while that's setting up, can you tell us uh, your Instagram handle and uh, what what uh, your Facebook page is? So they're both goofballs underscore by underscore Dan. And in these antennas, have you considered drilling a hole and sticking them in instead of just gluing it on the outside? Or is there a reason why you do one over the other? So one thing you have to watch out with when it comes to drilling holes in the golf balls, some of the golf balls have liquid cores. Um, I actually did a golf ball once and I put it on uh, a bolo. Um, and I thankfully lucked out and did not have one that had that liquid core. Um, and actually someone else warned me about that when they saw it, uh, especially since I use golf balls that are given to me. So I don't know if it happens to be one of the ones that has a liquid core. Um, but yeah, there are some that have liquid cores that when you go in, you get this foul smelling liquid that stains everything coming out of the golf ball. I think they use that for, um, distance. You know, when you, when you hit the golf ball um, off the tee, uh, I believe the liquid core helps it uh, get further distance. Um, so I have to be careful if I'm going to drill a hole inside that I'm not going to hit that liquid core. And some of the golf balls, um, they have multi-layers underneath of this material, um, this like uh, resin material that it, it's made out of. Um, that one's not going to stick on there so easily for me. Um, but what starts to happen is as you start to go through the golf ball, you might hit different layers of material. And sometimes they make the, uh, the layers, it might be the inner core has the liquid or it might be a middle core um, has the liquid. So you're not sure how depth wise going in drilling you might hit that liquid core. So I try to avoid in. drilling in. Uh, I also try to avoid going too deep with my cuts because of that. I've had some times where they have those different layers and so there's different coloration. And so if I carve too deep into the golf ball, I then start getting a totally different color uh, inside of the golf ball. 
And so that might throw off the effect that I'm trying to do if I have, you know, some deep wrinkles in the forehead and you've got this different color um, where that wrinkle is because I went too far into the material. Excuse me, Dan. Yes. Dan, this is Bob K. How you doing, um, Bob? Good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but you're having trouble with that antenna on the golf ball. Yes. Uh, they make a, an accelerant for super glue. Um, oh, really? It comes in a little spray bottle. Um, it, it, just look it up for as super glue accelerant. And you, you put the super glue on, you put your parts together, and you just give it one spritz with the accelerant, and it instantly bonds the glue. Oh, that's a perfect uh, suggestion. Instantly. Thank you. Yeah, it, it instantly bonds. And um, I, I don't know what it what effect it might have on the golf ball, but I've never had any problem with it uh, having Perfect. any effect on anything I've sprayed it with. It's just it, that all I can say it's called it's an accelerant, okay. super glue accelerant. I will definitely look that up. Thank you. OK. All right, guys, it's um, it's about 10 till 4 Eastern Standard Time. Any other questions for Dan regarding his golf ball carvings at this point? Um, looks like somebody just said that the accelerator is called Zip Kicker. Okay. If anybody's looking for that. That's correct. I That is the name. I couldn't think of it, but that is correct. So if no other questions, I will uh, I will go ahead and say thanks, Dan, for coming on and sharing with us today. Um, we we look forward to other creations that you have and uh, make sure that you uh, go out and check out his uh, his Etsy page. Uh, maybe he'll be posting some more things out there for us. Uh, if you're interested in buying one of his carvings, you can reach out to him on his Instagram page or his Facebook page. Uh, before I call the meeting, I just want to tell a little bit about what uh, – what workshops are available out there. Um, if you haven't checked it out, make sure you go out and check out Wood Carving Academy. Um, and it's just that, it's woodcarvingacademy.com. Uh, they, they have subscriptions that you can go on and sign on for. And uh, there's classes out there that are available that you can take. Uh, some of the workshops that's been available uh, in the past couple of years, they posted out there. Uh, again, it's a, a great resource uh, to go out and learn virtually without leaving your home. So uh, make sure you check out Wood Carbon Academy. Uh, some of the workshops that are coming up, Dave Stetson, who is on the meeting today, uh, he's going to be doing a class on April the 22nd called the Waving Walker. Uh, on uh, April the 24th, Janet Cordell is going to be coming on uh, and doing a workshop on uh, carving an old faithful horse. And then just recently I saw uh, that Del Green has uh, – has agreed to go on and do a class on May the 20th, carving a caricature dog. So those are available. Uh, Chris Hammock still doing online classes and bar flies. Uh, so make sure you go out and check out his website if you're interested in uh, taking classes from Chris. And then Alec Lacasse that was on with us a few weeks ago, uh, he has the Fundamentals of Wood Carving uh, website uh, where he has about 70 videos that takes you through uh, the step-by-step -step process to carve realistic carvings. Uh, most of his stuff's done in cottonwood bark. Uh, you can go out on YouTube and see some of Alex's stuff out there. Uh, so make sure you check out all those opportunities. Uh, also on September 23rd and 24th, uh, don't forget that the uh, CCA is going to be putting on their second uh, Carving the Rockies show out in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, it's the best caricature uh, wood carving show available. Uh, and again, it's going to be September 23rd, 24th. Uh, you'll need to go ahead and make reservations if you plan on going out there live. Uh, we hope to be broadcasting live from that. So uh, if you're not able to make it, you can always tune in here on that Saturday. I think that'll be on the 23rd. Uh, but we hope to see everybody out there live uh, at that meeting if you get a chance. Um, we will uh, go ahead and call the auction. Uh, Joe, who has bid 250, if you'll stay on the meeting here at the end. Uh, again, that's for the Rich Smithson Helvey autograph knife and the uh, Chris Morgan uh, uh, refrigerator magnet. Uh, so, Joe, thanks for your bid, and we appreciate that. Um, again, Dan, if you can uh, tell us one more time, what is your Facebook address? Uh, is it just uh, Goofballs by Dan? Can they find you that way? 
So I have uh, the Facebook page and the Instagram page are both goofballs underscore by underscore Dan. Okay. Uh, so make sure you go out and check out Dan's stuff again. Dan, thank you for coming on. Uh, thanks for being a supporter of our meetings. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. It's a, it's a blessing to us uh, to see that, you know, over 90 people show up for these meetings on uh, Saturdays uh, and tune in and support us. And uh, that way we're able to continue to have these meetings. So thank you all for joining us. Again, this is the International Association of Woodcarvers, where woodcarvers are helping woodcarvers. Thank you all again for joining us in today. Uh, next Saturday, we'll have Jared Wood on on March the 4th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we hope to see you then. Thank you all.